You want to do a super awkward random countdown? <clears throat> Five, four. Welcome back to Burley Fishing Podcast. I'm here with Paul Glass. I am Jeff Burlingame, and we are talking gear basics, specifically rod and reel. And we'll kind of dive down into some other gear that you're really going to need to have a good time fishing. Uh, maybe some lines, maybe some lures, maybe some bags, some different things like that. So you're going to want to stay tuned for that. Before we get into it, we're going to kick things off. The way we normally do, uh, first of all, I just want to say I appreciate all the reviews that you guys have left us. We've got some five-star yes. reviews. It makes me feel good. It makes my heart all nice and warm. And I appreciate it when you guys do that. It really helps us with the show. Feel free to, it, you know, if you enjoy, enjoy the content, <laughs> then leave us a five-star review. Uh, leave us a comment on your review. Uh, help us improve the show. Let us know things that you would like to hear on future episodes, things you'd like us to do to improve the show. All of that helps us out a lot. Uh, on top of that, if you guys want to communicate with us directly, you can always talk to us on Facebook, facebook.com backslash Burley Fishing. Hit us up on Instagram at Burley Fishing, youtube.com backslash Burley Fishing, and email us, Burley's Fishing. There's an S in there. We'll, we'll get a real email eventually, but you get the idea. You can communicate with us. So let's talk stuff for the episode. Paul, what are we kicking off with? Well, the same way we always kick it off with a question. question of the week <laughs> which is choose your own destiny themed this year okay imagine this you're moving into your first apartment big deal your only roommate options though you need a roommate it's a requirement your only options are terminator or rambo pick one go uh, how big is my apartment um it's a, it's you important. are living in a you're living in Chicago and you have $23,000. So roughly seven square feet, <laughs> seven square feet. Perfect. Uh, I think I could learn more from Rambo mm. as far as like hunting, trapping, tracking, Neck breaking, cool, cool things. Mm. I mean, both of them, if you don't do your dishes, they're going to kill you. Uh, but I think the Terminator would cause more damage because he's a soulless machine and Rambo, although kind of a machine, not soulless, he's, he's, he's a good guy at heart. He's, he's the hero of those movies. And to me, I could learn more from him. I think maybe could reason with him better. As long as I don't draw first blood, I think it'll be okay. But like Terminator is just going to like freaking wreck walls and stuff and like accidentally smash your TV. Not to me, not a good roommate. What about you? <clears throat> I think I'm a thousand percent Terminator. I would <laughs> sleep. A, I would sleep a lot better knowing that he wasn't staring at me while I was sleeping. Rambo is <laughs> for sure. I mean, yes, you think the Terminator's a robot? He wouldn't sleep, but he's like watching the place. He's just recharging via USB. Rambo could be six hundred thousand miles away in the jungle. You wouldn't know. I also feel like the Terminator would probably be able to pay his rent. Rambo, I feel like he's. He's not a rent skipper. Rent. He's not paying rent. Like so, when you go looking for rent, he just paints himself like he's a like, wall. And he's he like literally, wall. <laughs> literally just takes two steps to the left and is the door that you were looking You're at. You're like, oh yeah, no, where'd he go? <laughs> Bruh. Yeah. And he'll ghost you and he's not paying. So right, I'm fair. going Terminator. Let's let the uh we'll let the audience decide yeah, <laughs> what the bad I agree. each week. Terminator Rambo, go. All right. <laughs> New roommate. Cool. Uh let's catch up. News and noteworthy. Uh I got some some pretty cool swag. This oh, video is going on nice. YouTube, but yeah, yes, we got some, some Monster Bass gear, hashtag Monster Bass. Shout out to my boys over there. Uh, I'm so wearing my nicest gray sweater. Your grayest sweater, you could say. <laughs> yep, if you will. Is that a, what brand is that? Is that a high leap? There's uh, like Didis. a logo. A Didis? A Didis. A Didis. Okay, cool. High school football, my guy. Oh, yeah, Come on. yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it has the most gray of all my sweaters. The most gray. Yeah, it's pretty good. Cool. Um, this week, what did we get up to? For me, it was the finishing the kayak build. So the kayak, the kayak's built. The, oh, tank, the right. tank is tanked. Uh, so videos the, are up. The videos, uh, the power pole is not up yet. That'll be next week. So mm -hmm. the uh, Boondocks landing gear video is up. The uh, added the Burley Pro side bros, those are up. The battery in the back is up. I might do a separate video on that. It's a pretty like cool idea what Burley Pro put together um yeah but it's it's all installed for <laughs> the biggest nightmare was the freaking boondocks landing gear 
And, really? Uh, potentially, yes. Yes, it was that. Uh, the power pole, the wiring was a pain in the ass because it, it doesn't fit the 12-foot Hobie Pro Angler very well. Uh, it was kind of designed for the 14. So what happened is like in the back, there's one of the uh, like little tie downs uh, that you're supposed to like loop the cord through and it was blocked by the overhang of the plastic from this like attachment I had to buy in order to install the thing on the back of the boat, a uh, little transom mount adapter. Yeah. yeah. So I had to get my Dremel out and custom fit. <laughs> Dude, I drilled so many holes in my boat last week. I was say it looks like crap, doesn't it? <laughs> no, you'll see it. It actually it looks really good. The drill wait to see the, it out. Can't wait to see the shotgun damage. The the custom custom fit, we'll call it. Uh, <laughs> I, I have, of course, didn't have all the parts I needed, so I had to like constantly run out to stores. I went to Coopersville, which is like thirty minutes from me, like two three times to. A... So it was like a standard home project, seven times to Home Depot for. Yeah, different yeah, screws. I went to Ace a whole bunch of times. I went to Gull Lake Marine in Coopersville. They hooked me up. Those guys are awesome. They actually had to like pick me up apart from their Kalamazoo store. So like the two employees <laughs> met, brought the part to Coopersville, no. and I went and got it. <laughs> they Twice. executed a drug deal on your behalf. Twice. Wow. <laughs> two different parts. Yeah. That's uh, amazing. Yeah, we'll get the power pull up next week. I tested it out. It's pretty sweet. Works really well. Uh, my lake is really deep, so I don't get to use it very much. But yeah, I was about to say there's like one spot. Yep. There is, there is exactly one spot, but I mean, when the bass bed there, they go up shallow so I can like hug that spot and mm -hmm. I'll be fine. Be able to pitch at them. What about Beautiful. you? I worked a ton. Ooh, ooh. This is more of like a uh, life skills than outdoor skills. Gave myself a haircut. <laughs> Dude. Look at that yes, fade. Hold on. Let me pretty, get in here. It's pretty fresh. It, it, you did that it, yourself. By hand, with a beard by, trimmer. By hand, wow. With a beard trimmer, my own hand. Yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm growing my hair out for the rest of my life now. Thought about that, and then I remembered it. I looked like crap like that. I don't even look good like this. This is my yeah. best case scenario. So I did that. Uh, the turkey calls are out though, so I'm going to start walking the dog and getting prepared. Nice. So that's my goal for the week, is like every single time I walk my dog, I'm going to be seeing if there's a turkey within like 50 feet. Also this weekend, um, spent some time on Onyx, the mapping system software that I use, yep. which everybody in the planet earth uses. Um, and there's a, there's a piece of public land that's like two miles from my house in between where that lake is that we have gone a couple times ice fishing right down the road. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's right where I got my turkey license last week. Um, so that's huge last week in april first week in may um so that is on the calendar and then i have been trying to scope out some different spots this year i saw two toms strutting right off the road last year um uh, not even i don't know two or three hundred yards from where that public land is and it's like they were in private but they're like right on the line i'm gonna try and find that try and find that dude so that's nice. uh, that's probably about it feels weak but that's what i got yeah, it's been it's been a busy week of quarantine, I would say. I'm I'm hoping to get out fishing, but it's gonna rain all weekend and be yeah. like pretty pretty cool temps too. So we'll it see. Has been, it has been cold and windy. We did though next weekend. We have time on the calendar. We mm, are gonna yep. go to Portland State Game Area. I'll be fly fishing. You can have weapon of choice, but I will be fly fishing. Small ace. And it's going to be mm -hmm. beautiful. Uh, I mean, I'll bring power. every, I'll bring everything I own. You, you already know that. So, <laughs> <laughs> weapon of choice. You mean uh, I'll just do whatever I want until I'm frustrated and then try well, something else. <laughs> and we're planning on wedding, but we're bringing boats just in case. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think we'll we'll have plenty of options. So we will be podcasting from the road that time. So that short be, lunch will be had. Short lunch will be had. We'll, yeah. we'll have somehow we'll coordinate bringing these yetis out and figure this thing out. Zoom call each other from 20 feet apart. I don't know. <laughs> Social distancing, bro. <laughs> gotta... yeah, I'll be in the back seat. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. It's at least six feet in your truck. <laughs> easily. Uh, All right. So yeah, rods, reels, rigging, miscellaneous. We'll start with rods. All right. Do you want to break them down or do you want me to break them down? Uh, yeah, let's start with like, uh, kind of the basics when you guys are looking for a rod, obviously you can start with this, the simple differences. You have a spinning rod, 
You have a bait casting rod. We have trolling. Whoa, rods. whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> whoa, whoa. We're whoa, skipping whoa. ahead a little bit. That what is regard there are there are multiple different kinds of reel. We'll get into that later. Mm-hmm. The main differential differentiator is whether it's a bait caster or a spin caster or or a spin spinning reel. We'll get into the difference between the two, but go through the go through why the rod is different and how you would actually what is like the explain how you would know the difference in the like in a quick glance. From a spin to a bait caster? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, pretty much what I would look for is the eyes on the rod. So, I mean, depending on where those things are set up and positioned, you can also look at the butt of the rod uh, just to see where the uh, seat for your reel goes. So, spinning reel is going to hang down, bait caster is going to be on top. Uh, and bait caster, the eyes are also going to be on top of the rod as you look down it. So, it's kind of like if you're looking from the seat for the reel all the way down the eyes, you should see that. That's bait caster. They're also uh, labeled, so you can look at that too. But well, but if you go to a store, <laughs> it is they get a, all mixed up. It's a freaking nightmare. Oh, it's yeah. You go to Cabela's, like there's one rack, and there are 17 spin rods, 15 bait casters, and they're just in no <laughs> particular order. Absolute joke. Eight foot. <laughs> Absolute joke. I, the yeah. the debt giveaway every single time. Bait caster has a trigger. Mm. 90 what 99.9 repeating percent of the time mm-hmm. spin yeah. cast never has a trigger yep. so if it's got it's a just... trigger a little plastic trigger for your finger bait casting rod period or a, a really terrible spinning setup <laughs> yeah and you can't here's the other you can't a factory sw- you can, yeah, yeah. <laughs> factory factory error in your favor the sub rod is 200 percent off yeah. the <laughs> it also won't work <laughs> yeah. well so let's say the thing so jeff's saying the eyes are on top on a bait caster that's because that's where the line is going to go and then on a spinning reel it's the reverse or on the bottom because that's where the rot the reel is you it is physically it is physically possible possible for you to make it happen the way that you needed to i i, can we, I, prom- can we just I promise you out real quick i promise you you don't want to do that yeah you can go to the cottage and i have two rods that look like that yeah you, <laughs> you reserve for you, uncle mike because he doesn't know what he's doing i love if you. you if you're getting into fishing <laughs> the the number one thing we can do to help you out is if you have a spinning rod don't hold it with the reel up no, no never no. because no. It, it's like the number one thing you can do to look stupid so you know how there's like some things you just can't do like, like in life, <laughs> like in life, yeah, that would be one of them. Uh, that would be it. So hold your rod the right way. Don't drink Pepsi and whiskey unless you're in Canada, and uh, do not have the spinning rail vertical. That's yeah. it. Just you're just good to go. Channel your inner Ace Ventura laces out, Dan. It's eyes oh, down for your spinning. It's eyes up for your bait casting. All right, and the trigger. Keep in mind the trigger. So if you guys trigger are, are, equals bait caster. Yeah. If you're searching the racks, uh, trying to look for a good deal. Great idea. Do that. <laughs> know idea. know what you're buying. <laughs> know what you're buying is all I can say. And uh, another thing that's important when you're scoping out the racks is nine times out of 10, and sometimes not, which is terrible, but nine times out of 10, right ahead of the handle on the rod, you can see the length, the action, Mm. the strength of of the of the rod kind of get and sometimes even like what it's meant for would be on that on like usually higher end rods but they'll always tell you yeah they'll they'll usually tell you can base it on what kind they'll they'll list the weight of the line the weight yes the weight and the line that you should have so the higher the weight so if they're like oh up to a one ounce that's a relatively heavy if they're you know an eight ounce weight eighth of an ounce that's relatively you know lower yeah best case scenario it'll just say it's a light you know, ultra light, you know, medium, medium heavy, so on and so forth. So we can get through that. So generic rod sizes, you've got ultra light as like the one spectrum, medium uh, as like the kind of middle of the road, and then heavy. Um, and, and then everything in between. And, you know, <laughs> All well, the yeah, and there's always medium, medium, heavy, you know, blah, blah, blah. But um, that will be one of the, that'll be one of the designations. And that basically is you know, typically related to the, stiffness of the rod more right. or less doesn't always 
it doesn't always correlate with like the thickness of the rod, but it usually does. So if you are, you know, flipping into super heavy cover, you're looking for a heavy or an extra heavy or an ultra heavy, whatever they're calling it. Usually it's, I think it's just extra heavy is like the heaviest, but like, you know, heavy. I have a, I have a Magnum heavy by Dobbin. Oh yeah. The, the fairy did. rod is a Magnum heavy, but yeah. He if uses that if as trying, a flagpole. If you're trying to, yeah, well, we call it the broomstick, right? So it's <laughs> yeah. like, if you're trying to penetrate a, a, a heavier wire hook, through the mouth of a fish, or you're trying to, I guess, tow a boat, tow a boat. I don't or, know, <laughs> or a log that you just got stuck into off yeah. the bottom of of the river. Like that's fine. You're gonna need a heavy rod. Well, and if you're so, I mean, I have one. The only time I use it is when I'm flipping into like either really heavy weed cover, frogs. Uh, exactly, frogs. Um, frogs all or day. Or, it's so um, important for frogs. Well, yeah, I mean, the other thing too is when it when you have a stiff rod, you have a lot, you have the ability to flip. You have a little bit more control over shorter distances. You're not going to be casting super far. You're going to have a nice, typical like if you, a lot of people like to punch into that kind of cover, mm -hmm. which means you know, big old heavy jig head, or mm -hmm. or some kind of big old heavy weight with like a creature bait or something like that, something really wiggly. Um, and you're trying to punch through that mat of grass or the the lily pads, and you're you're letting that fall, right? Even with a worm or whatever, you're letting that big old weight. You're throwing it way up high, bam! Big old splash, big old sound, punch right through there, get down through the the initial cover, then you get smacked, and and you're essentially you need you need a winch, and you need. <laughs> You need a big old stick Rassle to bring that, that sucker, sucker out. <laughs> yeah. And so, out. and and that's why you can't, you know, if you're, if you got a medium rod, you're either going to lose that fish um, or, or you, off, you, just because it's, you're, you're just going to, you're just going to get to a point where you're like, I'm pulling as hard as I can. I'm either going to break this rod um, or, or I'm just, or, or at a stalemate. And then you got to cut the line. Yeah. Or the fish will break it for you. It's just going to go. But, but, but if you got a big old heavy, heavy rod or magnum heavy um, <laughs> you can have you can have a you know you I mean you can have a steel cable on there it's not going to break right and you and, yeah. and the lot and the rod's not going to break and you can just winch that fish out yep yep yeah, and then you've got your the opposite end of the spectrum is your ultralight so if you're like trout fishing and you got a four foot i think i have a four foot ultralight it's like one of my go-to rods it just just for fun things there's um, a, it's not the uh ugly stick is it the oh GX2? yes the GX2. That, yeah, I have the same. Dirty, I love that rod. Fun, yeah, it's super, super sensitive. This is um, like $39. It's like 40 yeah, bucks. it's 40 bucks. Yeah. And like, at, you can get it at like a, at pretty much anywhere they'll have it on sale. I usually um, just like have it in the back of my truck, like up on the back seat. <laughs> so it's it's one I can use just about anywhere with all the rivers around us. It's a great, great rod, um, but, but it's super sensitive. Um, and then you're getting a lot of bends so that... Um, when like if you're again if you're trout fishing trout have relatively soft mouths you don't need a super um strong hook set by any stretch um if you're bluegill fishing you get all that sensitivity that you're not getting with a really really thick rod um, and that lets you play the fish um without yeah. losing it because typically they're not going to be running into anything except for potentially sticks or logs but you know it, it's giving you it's it's the right tool for the right job and then you're you've got your mediums you know heavy kind of, not heavy kind of enough to Let's you, but the other thing that I don't think we've talked about, and we'll probably get in this maybe, what is, um, you know, I guess we talked about a little bit. The you want to match your weight and your line to your rod, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? So if you've got a super heavy rod, you want bigger line because you're going to be throwing bigger weight and you're going to be winching those fish out. It's also going to cast better. Yeah, and that's going to bring us to our reels later too. Correct. Because uh, you're going to need heavier drag if you're dealing with Absolutely. heavier setup. <laughs> with a with a with an ultralight, you want to go lighter line because you're going to have smaller weight at the end of that line in terms of your terminal tackle. So whatever you know, whatever weight you got, you're going to have a super super small jig. You're going to have one of those little tiny itty bitty fingernail sized Taskmasters. You know whatever it is, you're, you're going to or a Panther Martin or whatever. You're going to have it like a spinner. You're going to have a small mm -hmm. weight. So you can't have a thick line because it's not fly fishing. The line's not doing the work. What's doing the work is the momentum of you throwing. And then slinging that little itty bitty, itty bitty weight has to drag the line out with it. And it's got to right. actually pull all the lines. So the lighter line you have, the, the better that you're going to be able to cast. And then I think that's most important. I think where people mess up the most is with like relatively the easiest setup, which is like a medium. When you have a six foot, six foot six, seven foot medium. Yeah, it's medium, so easy medium, to, heavy. 
yeah, it's so easy to overline it. You know, you want to yeah. have 20 pound tests because that's what like all the pros <laughs> have. On, but like you don't, one, you don't need it. But two, yeah. you know, the biggest thing is if you overline it, you're not going to have control on your calf. Um, and then, you know, a lot of people, I mean, you can, the, the, then you're, you're the only option you're left with because there's so much whip in the rod or there's not enough where if you don't have enough weight at the end of it with your medium, you end up throwing it and doesn't go anywhere. And then you went, that's when you end up at that situation where you cast really hard, it goes nowhere. And it, because it's so light, the with the weight isn't dragging the line outwards, wherever you aimed, it's just whipping right around behind you. And you're like, how is this even possible? And then you quit fishing. (laughs) And then you snap everything over your knee and you walk away. Um, (laughs) Smart for me. (laughs) So when, when you're reading that, when you're reading that little ticker that Jeff's talking about, it's, you know, kind of on the, on the rod. First thing you want to look for is, you know, if you're a beginner, we talked about this in the first episode, six foot to seven foot medium. Um, you're going to want, you're going to have a range, a wider range granted, but you're going to have a range of weights that it's going to put on there. It's going to probably say half ounce, something like that. Right. Um, listen that listen means, to the rod. Yeah. <laughs> that's the optimal. Yeah. That's the optimal weight for you to get a nice cast. Yeah. Can you go heavier or lighter than that? Yes. Yeah, but as sure. Paul just said, you'll be pretty frustrated. It's not a good idea. Uh, stick to the line weight. The line weight's usually listed on there too. So just six to eight that. is the standard medium. And then yeah. you, if that, you go medium heavy, it'll be like eight to 12. And if you go higher than that, it's like 15 plus. So, and with braid, you can go higher, right? Yeah. So six to yeah. eight on a medium is really like a 12 to 16 or 20 or whatever mm-hmm. on probably 20 on a, on the like standard braid. Yeah. And we'll talk line a little bit. We're not going to go obviously super advanced mm-hmm. into any of this. Like really what we're talking to here is like beginner to intermediate level usage, right? We want you guys to use the gear, be happy with the gear. We might talk about some brands. We're not huge on branding here. We're huge on making sure you're Did happy. Did you just touch your hat while you said that? I did. We're not yeah. huge on branding. You did. You did. <laughs> hey, so when you, when you see the video, you, if you watch, if you're hearing this or seeing this on YouTube, you if you're watching this watch on YouTube happen, right now, it happened. It, it happened. literally just, I, that was we don't want to brand much. We don't around here. Or do we? <laughs> oh, did us? Is it did us sponsoring us now? <laughs> no, that would be, no, they're not. All right. <laughs> That'd be so, anyways, <laughs> so as we go through the gear guys, like we're, again, we're just playing to a you know, basic beginner level to maybe intermediate, right? So <laughs> nothing challenging. Crack, crack the next one on the mic. Yeah. And then we'll hit, um, <laughs> next thing, we'll, we'll hit action really briefly. If anyone has questions, type them in. This is, I think, where you could do a, probably an episode on if you're me, but I think we're not going to hit it all. Um, action. A link in the bio for that too. Yeah, we should do that. We should do that. So action, <laughs> you're thinking, you're, you're going you're gonna to see a couple things. You're going to see like, medium fast you know uh ultra light super you know ultra fast or whatever you're gonna see medium moderate medium heavy medium you're gonna you're gonna see these combination of of terms we already walked through the ultra light light medium you know heavy fast moderate slow all that means uh is when you load the rod with the weight so when you come back and the weight is all bent and then you throw it wherever the rod wherever wherever the weight is causing the rod to bend is what they're talking about which means on a let's say it says uh heavy and slow slow would mean the rod is bending when you put it under weight when you put the line under weight it's bending towards the tip so not towards your hands out towards the end so that means it's that whole that that's a really stiff in general, it's a really stiff rod and it's not mm-hmm. like it's breaking way at the tip. If it's a, you know, um, an ultralight fast, that means it's bending way down closer to the butt, like towards the middle. So when the fish grabs it and it, and that rod, you know, arcs, like you always see in like the guy fishing yeah. on the, on the commercial folds. and it's That's fully that, folded. That, that picture at Bass Pro Shops. <laughs> yeah there's, there's like the the statue or the mannequin of the guy who's just like loaded up a three foot ultralight <laughs> and it's like a total bent. loop it's like holding a so the uh the basically what's that the, the the basic breakdown is the slower or stiffer the rod is the it's bending closer to the tip and then the faster it is um when you're reading it a little ticker and it says like ultralight fast that means it's bending closer to where your hands are so it's basically it's like more pliable and you're getting 
you're actually the most sensitive rod i think is like uh an ultra light that's like medium because most of the sensitivity is right there in the tip and it's like an ice fishing rod and you're getting like the blank is very stable in the middle and you're actually able to feel all that vibration but you're actually able to watch it happen in the tip is that good old ugly stick <laughs> the little oh, for, yeah the little yeah the little, tip. exactly yeah but and yeah so, so yeah. that that plays into from everything from casting to um you know uh actually landing the fish um the action mm -hmm. of the lure uh underwater so, the hooks that you have to throw yeah yeah exactly so if you have like a heavy rod slow action versus a ultralight fast action right ultralight fast action like the hook's gonna do its own job like fish is gonna mm -hmm. hook himself uh mm -hmm. if you're throwing that heavy gear like that's why we were talking about frogging with that like frogging it's the ultimate hook set <laughs> but, and by frogging he means what do i mean you mean throwing frog uh lures oh. that look like frogs and the lily pads typically. i mean I've, yes we are we are yes this is a beginner to an intermediate level lesson sure okay so frogging uh, is the most fun or least amount of fun you could possibly have on the water it kind of depends on how your day goes but yeah if you guys have ever you've definitely if you're getting into fishing you've probably seen this at some point if you follow any fishing channels you've seen frogs because people just love posting about them because they're so much fun that's but it's like just a little could hollow be a lot of fun pretty it sure. can you can have a, a good day or you can have a bad day but if you have a good day it's a real good day uh but yeah it's a little hollow body bait so it's just plastic full of air squeeze it out uh, it does fill up with water from time to time, but that makes it float on the surface of the water. And then you have like a little dual hook system coming off the back that comes up around. Uh, yeah, just like if you see this on YouTube, it's <laughs> comes around the butt of the frog. Uh, <laughs> so what I have is like you throw that over lily pads or heavy cover and you play it like a frog swimming or hopping across the water. You kind of pause it from time to time, but the fish will come up. They'll blow up on that top water baits getting hit is like i don't know top five favorite things of all time in my entire life uh but it, it's just amazing to see a bass or anything just blow because you'll hit pike on those too but and smallies like have them blow up on that it's amazing but then you gotta give it a give it a pause one of the best things you can do is be patient with a frog because if you set the hook as soon as you see the start of the blow up you will miss every single frog fish you could have had so that was like the number one thing that i had to learn was you just wait a second and then hammer him just rip his face off a second longer than you think yes exactly so the the general gut reaction if you guys you start casting frog baits and like yeah just ugh. first thing you're gonna do is as soon as you see water move you're gonna be like just ripping it out and you're just gonna hit yourself in the face with a frog <laughs> like that's what's gonna happen don't and then you'll be very mad would be a very angry that's player. what i do bro <laughs> so paul and i went fishing last year and we went frogging naturally and i had a good day and paul had a bad day and you know sometimes that's what happens man. sticks with me to this day well <laughs> this and then day. we well then we went on again and we we did we threw frogs and uh jeff caught a freaking sweet bass and i caught a bunch of lily pads <laughs> well it was like it was a multi-day getaway mm -hmm. and there was mm -hmm. like the the, the first day you kind of like died i think it was like the next day that we had i had like a really good frogging day yeah. but that first day we went out and you were sick already so it wasn't ideal uh, okay. i did catch a nice size one that day but that was the only one had some we both had some blow-ups and like nothing else and then the next day i was i had to have had three or four on the frog in the same patch of lily pads and Paul was like right next to me. I almost caught the same fish four times. Didn't do it. <laughs> so there we go. Yeah. There we go. So anyways, right. a, little, a, little, a little tangent, but frogging, frogging, frogging. Frogging's good. good. All right. Yeah. Reels. So we talked about rods, uh, ultra light, medium, heavy, anywhere about, between. Action, fast, moderate, slow, length. Um, <laughs> I think length, your rule of thumb, mm. rule of thumb. And from a manufacturer standpoint, like standard rod manufacturers, your fast ultralight lights that in that neighborhood are almost always less than six feet. But mostly. Uh, yeah, not always. Um, I, I kind of like what I really want actually is a uh, like a light action um, 
seven foot rod. Yes. For those hundred percent exist. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, rule of thumb just doesn't mean it's always true, but rule of thumb means usually. Yeah. So unless yeah, just general rule of thumb, your mm -hmm. mediums, like when you walk into a whatever sporting goods store, the majority know, of rods that you see will be medium. What you're going to see <laughs> is mediums ranging from six to seven feet. Yeah. Like maybe, six, six maybe. medium heavy is like the most commonly sold rod length. I feel yeah. like maybe what you I can do pretty say. much anything with that's what we, I would recommend buying if you are starting, which I think we talked about. So my first spin setup was an ugly stick GX two and it was a six, six medium heavy. Yes. It's like, that's a $40 rod. So if you want it with real, I think it comes with like just one of those crappy Shakespeare te reels. Te but te technically, technically te you can call it a reel. real. As in it holds line and, and you can <laughs> bring it back in. <laughs> you can reel um, it. <laughs> and then your heavies are going to be in like the eight foot range. And they're going to be for like a, for yeah, like I swim mean, baits. But if you're, yeah. if you're doing a flipping rod, right. Flipping seven, seven to eight, seven to eight. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Swim, swim bait rods are usually a lot longer. Right. So I think eight, seven to nine is pretty much. Yeah. But then there's right there we're we're neglecting Musky the entire rods. planet of yeah you got your catfish <laughs> rods which are going to be yeah. your like ultra heavies they're going to be not the episode longer you're going to get trolling rods or they're longer yeah. but they've got they're straight backed and like there's a whole bunch of things I was just talking about generically when walking a store that's roughly what you're going to see yeah we're talking but to these, talking to you getting out there on your on the bank getting out there on a kayak small boat you know just getting after it yeah you so don't you need see, any of that other yeah. shit but and so that's roughly what you're typically going to see length. Yeah matters mostly yeah, I, for i would say mostly for casting mostly for yeah. so like you know when longer you rod you're going to cast further cast better generically um when you're Unless bank you, fishing that really matters it. you're probably looking at a 10 footer yeah i mean if you're on the bank that's tough to to get to you also have to the, reach yeah the exactly dangle, the dangle matters yeah i mean if you guys are bank fishing, the, the number one thing is position. And the number two thing is like, have a rod that will get you where you need to go. So we'll, we'll talk, you know, reels here in a second in line and we'll put that all together. But yeah, like you, if you're bank fishing, you will be more successful if you hoof it through the woods and you get to uncomfortable positions and you mm -hmm. parallel the bank. I mean, that's it. Like you're not yeah. going to get to the spots that the boaters can get to, especially if you're not casting on like a little podunk pond in somebody's sub suburb, right? Like it's just not going to happen. So if you're on a bigger lake, which typically that's where the fish are, just go to uh, a tougher position that most people can't get to. Every time I do that, I succeed on the bank. If I play the normal positions, yeah, every single time, like I just tuck <laughs> Oh, oh, come on. Uh, I, I tuck myself up in the woods or I'll just go somewhere where like nobody's going here. And then I'll just like uncomfortably underarm pitch my lure into the water and I'll get bass. And if you go to the places where there's a park bench and a well-worn patch of grass that 175 <laughs> people fished that morning, you're not going to catch fish. <laughs> like unless you're lucky. So you're, you're getting lucky at that point. Yeah, hundred percent. So yeah, just some thoughts here. But anyways, so, yeah, that's generic bass. We'll just say that that that's the the layout for generic bass. I mean, we know the go-to fish is bass. Like in yeah. general, that's what most people are going after if they say I'm going fishing. I could um, sit here for. We may have to. We're doing an episode. I'm gonna wait till you're sick. I'm gonna host it by myself and I'm gonna post it, and it's gonna be about rods and rods and rods. And that's <laughs> all right. We're moving on to reels. Right. Comment, comment on this episode if uh, you guys want to hear that. If you want to hear the, lon for... the lonely, yeah, I'm you stuck can, in my ask, house. You can ask questions. I'm gonna, I... yeah, I'll do one. I don't care. I, I, do I won't. That's for respond. me. <laughs> All right, no, but you, get, you get a banter with yourself as well. <laughs> <I'm saying. laughs> what do you think about that, Paul? Oh, that this is pretty great. <laughs> You're just gonna hear the crack of the beer every five minutes. Yep, it'll be great. All right, real it. So you've got um, your standard <clears throat> standard reel types. Spinning is probably the easiest, most recognizable. Mm -hmm. um, that's the one that Jeff was talking about. So the spool is parallel with the rod, hangs a couple inches yep. below the rod. Um, and then when you throw the line, it's just literally sp spiraling off of it. Right? Yep. 
Yeah. The, 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 the actual spool is not moving. The line is being pulled off of it. Yeah. The line just pulls off. Yes. So that typically caters. Guides. Yeah. <laughs> that it. typically caters to um, lighter lures mm-hmm. because there's, it's got a, the, the lure weight has to do less work. Uh, they are pretty darn easy to cast. There is a little bit of um, skill involved in closing the bale. Uh, so the bale close is your, like the... Close your bale. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. Quick, so the, Quick tips on spinning. <laughs> yeah, close the bale. Go. So the bale, the bale is what, in, is what in, is it enables you to engage the drag. So the mm-hmm. standard process for casting a spinning, you open the bale, which is that little wire that you see that's always spinning around the... Um, it, if you ever seen like, one that's spinning like around the halfway yeah, and, around the reel, right? Yeah, and um, so you you open that, so you flip it up. Uh, you hold the, you're holding, you're pinching the line against the rod. You you bat you. Uh, what do you call it? You like light, what are you you're, what are you doing? Call it a do wind that? up. You got a wind <laughs> <Bat> up. <cast. laughs> yeah. So you yeah you, uh, you load it up. You're, you're, it's like you're gonna you're like you're gonna you're gonna crank one at a left, and then you. Uh, <laughs> You throw it, and at the same time that you you know turn your hips and throw your arms and throw the rod and everything else, um, don't throw the rod. Uh, hold on to the rod, but you move <laughs> it very quickly let in go the direction the that you want everything to go. <laughs> so you sling the line, you sling it out there. You want to let go of the line. When you let go yeah. of the line, that sucker is just rolling. Mm-hmm. And then the trick is well, the trick is right before the lure hits the water, you want to close the bale with your with your if you're right-handed and you've cast it with your right. You're holding the rod with your right hand. You want to close the bale with your left hand or your other yeah. hand. Um, what that's going to do is that's going to prevent the line from continuing to move to get pulled off after the lure stops moving when it hits the water. Mm-hmm. And and the biggest the reason that matters there's two thing two reasons that really matters. One, it's stopping what we call line twist, which is where the line is actually getting twisted when it continues on but the lure isn't pulling it because yeah. it's all coiled up really tightly on the uh uh on the spool and so it's you know it, it's like a telephone cord you know those like old the old school like 80s telephone it's got cords some memory to it right there's memory and it's all coiled up and then when you whenever you stretch that and, and try and put it back together it gets all jacked up well when you reel that back in so you close the bale late and then you start reeling it in you do that enough times and you're going to get these just like bird's nest inside a mess inside of your reel and then you're either cutting line or yeah. you're, you're literally hand stretching out however much you've been casting yeah it's, most people don't think that you can do that on a spinning reel oh, it will Again. piss <laughs> oh, it'll make it'll ruin a day in a heart like, i think i had I, th- I thought like oh my my reel really sucks no i just i'm just terrible at this i went that yeah. did that for like a it year like, it's awful some telltale signs for it is you'll see over the the top of the spool the line is like on top of it rather than being wrapped around it like Very it's supposed neatly. to or there's a little loop that comes off the side that's twisted up with a little little yeah that that's that's the the big sign. your reaction should be punching yourself in the head um, so I mean, you can pull there's, the there's all, off and fix it, but it's frustrating. It's terrible. It's, um, it's a bird's nest. It, sucks. it sounded very complicated. I promise you it's a lot easier to learn uh, when you're first starting. Explaining then. it is... Uh, well, it, sound, it sounded bad. I don't want to do it. I don't want to buy hard. one. I promise you it's easy. We should post it. Yeah. Maybe we'll post a video. It'll literally be a two-minute video. Yeah. <laughs> Casting. It'll yeah. be the shortest video on Birdly Fishing's YouTube. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna um, but it is legitimately... Um, they're, they're very inexpensive. They mm-hmm. all, most part, work really well. Um, they're not fragile by any means, uh, except for some cheaper ones, whatever. Yeah, um, like the, the things ten dollars Shakespeare's. Yeah, if you're, anything you buy on wish.com. If, <laughs> if you're <laughs> Overstock has great reels. No, if you're, <laughs> if you're if you're buying if you're buying like a forty plus, like you're gonna just get something decent. Um, the things you want to look for, they always advertise the number of bearings. <laughs> mm, so um, many bearings. that's a that's an absolute 11 plus scam. one is my favorite yeah, whatever it's a, yeah, the plus one really makes a difference it's, it's an so absolute bad. scam so the the thing that re- i'm well okay we'll talk about example. slx uh the shimano slx has three bearings the, exactly perfect come example. at me with those 12 bearings <laughs> and the 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 presidente has what four or five or something like that um yeah. what yeah, the, yeah. the the reason that matters it's it's one it's playing into the smoothness the most important things 
smoothness to me, I, I almost don't care. I mean, if you're going to spend more than $40, it's going to be smooth enough where you don't care. Like there is no comfort level. There's no discomfort in a slightly less smooth reel. What really matters is when, when I stop reeling, there's absolutely no disconnect between me stopping my crank and the bail yeah. spinning around uh, the spool. Yeah. So I wanted to instantly stop so that when I set the hook, there's no gap at all. Oh, a hundred percent. So yeah, if, if you're going to, you know, your, your local fishing store and they have reels, usually they have a setup of reels on these short little handles that you can then pick up and reel and test. And Do you have sure one like within reach? Already, a reel, a spin yeah. reel. I mean, I have all my rods right there. Hang on. Should have thought of this earlier. Oh my god! Sorry, right. I'll edit this. All right, if you're watching this on YouTube, spinning reel. <laughs> in my office <laughs> hey honey i'm just casting it's fine <laughs> anyway so uh go to spinning reels that that you appreciate number one go fluger fluger all day the president 50 president bucks. the presidente what's the, the upgraded one? version of that i can never remember but the i have xt two of, it's, it's dude, just the xt i Is have two one? that's what the one with the wooden that doesn't look like mine. Mine's black and has a little wooden. Is it the same this thing? Is the Am I crazy? Let me see it again. Yes. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. That's black, that's right? The, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the thing you're talking it's, about. Honest to God, it, for the money, you <laughs> yes, yeah, you cannot beat. That is the value chalice. I'm making the value chalice, <laughs> brimming and overflowing. It's so good. Um, it is. There's plenty of other great brands, but I mean, if you guys are looking for something for 50 bucks, that's money. Get the present. It's, it's so good. good. The ultralight one is like the where it's at. That's where it's so good is in the mm. smallest size. Mm. The other one, the other one that I would say, the Cabela's uh, ZX. That's white. Yeah. That is made by. Oh, I'm gonna have to go double check this. I think it's Akuma, but it could be somebody yeah, else. Yeah, Akuma would be another. You know, they relabel Cabela's a lot, but Akuma's for a good brand. Eighty or ninety bucks. It. I know it sounds like a lot of money, probably. It is. I have. I have a lot. <laughs> They're so good. They're so good. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'd say those are pretty solid. And then those obviously, yeah, the, the other thing we're saying is like, just go pick them up, feel them yourself, like flip the bail a few times, reel the thing. Uh, like Paul said, like reel and stop and see what happens. You want to feel an instant stop, no yeah. gap. You shouldn't be able to do this. Do you, like jiggle. There yeah, with no the handle jiggle. tightened down, yeah, there should be no jiggle. Nothing should move because what's mm -hmm. going to happen is when you – when you're reeling and you decide you want to set the hook, there's like a little bit of a rotation. I'm making movements with my hands that you can't see. <laughs> I'm doing little, You have to go When I YouTube. set, there's like a gap. <laughs> yeah, there's like a gap between when I set the hook and all of a sudden the yeah. line isn't pulled. And I promise you, you will lose fish. you're going to lose fish. And it, and it will. And you'll cry. Like, what did I Power do? Tears. I did everything right. You did everything right except for buy a decent reel. So I, that's where you screwed up. That's where you messed up. <laughs> it just, it happened. I, it, it, your, your beginner rig, it, sure. It's going to happen. But that yeah. is that, like we talked about like the seat on a kayak being like the number one thing, the number one thing for mm -hmm. me more than anything else is one. It's, it's gotta be, get something that doesn't have any, like there's no lag. And when you, when you stop reeling, that thing can't move. That bail can't move. Right uh do you have a high end that you would go for if you were going to spend like a hundred bucks um, i would say like a shimano um i've never invested in a shimano spinning reel but uh was like the sahara that's like 70 80 bucks i think it's it's gonna be the that oak that that knockoff Akuma. Well, yeah, yeah, I guess that's it. That's the one. Okay. I, it's okay. I, I don't okay. need anything better than that. I really, if the only time I'd spend more is if it was one like fancy trolling rod and I had a boat. I mean, that's really sure. it. I don't need anything more than that. I'm not sure. a, I'm not really a gear dude. I'm more of a, mm -hmm. more of a like if it works, like I'm good. What kind of line would you put on this? So I'm actually, um, you can put anything on. 
most yeah, of it. I'm probably going all of mine. <laughs> I don't have braid on all mine. I have mono on a lot of mine. Mm-hmm. I, but I, so I don't, I'm not like a bass guy either. Like yeah. if someone asked me like, what do you normally fish for? It's an, I'm not saying bass probably. Mm-hmm. I love yeah. doing it. I do it all the time, but that's not like, I don't need to have the reason people have braided line on all their reels typically is because they're bass fishing a ton. They don't want to lose fish. They don't want to waste an opportunity working a fish. So they have heavier rigs. So they're, when you read like a forum and they're like, what should I put on my bass setup? It's like 30 pound, at least braided line, uh, yeah. straight rigged straight to the lure and, uh, you know, a, a heavy action, um, you know, or a heavy rod, slower action and just crank them in. And that's, there's nothing wrong with that. That's just not what my setups are because I just use them for so many other things typically. So I like, I'm probably 50, 50 between mono and, uh, I'm not a huge floral guy. And then, um, most of just don't have to pay for it. And then the, and, and then I do have a lot of braided though. And I have a lot of like, it depends on what you're fishing for. And then a lot of times when I'm using braid on a spin setup, I pretty much always have a leader. Yeah. So I'll go, I'll go a 10 pound braid to a leader. Um, and the leader, I don't know, usually and 10 pound, 10 pound braid is a, that's worth a lot. Yeah. I mean, like that's I, not breaking. You're not going to like a catfish is like the only thing that's going to break that. Like you're not going to get broken off. No, exactly. Like the, the waters around here, when you're dealing with uh, the rivers and the lakes around here, there's not a lot of like ultra clear water that I have to worry about. In fact, there's none. Uh, my lake gets semi clear from time to time. But it's rivers that you get into that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's like the braid for me plays well just about everywhere. And like, I, I don't lose fish because I have braided line on. What but color do you use? What color braid? Yeah. Just like the mossy green. The moss. The moss green, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but like it, it works well with the water. So you gotta you gotta play to the waters. So if you're fishing like ultra clear and you have finicky fish, like you're gonna go with the mono or the fluoro and you're gonna have the in fluoro's like invisible right in the water. Like you're gonna go with that. So that, that's pretty uh, legit. Yeah. I mean it's it's just so the it's fish great for I only own it for water. leaders. What? Fluoro? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I usually do a floral leader on my spinners if like I have finicky fish. I'll just add it if I need it. Yeah. But usually I can just go straight braid. And like the baitcaster setups are all braid, but they don't have to be. Uh, so but they are right. for me. <laughs> We're not going to cover like salt water. I'm not going to. I mean, there's there's a whole We're, planet out there other than the Midwest. We're kind of Midwest focused slash bass focused. Yeah. I Midwest will say though. Legs. Yeah, yes. small mouth, large they, mouth, and pike so, is generally what we mostly catch. But we do yes. we fish for everything. I dabble. Yeah, <laughs> we, we the the spin. So that spinning setups, bait cast. I'm mm-hmm. gonna let you take this one, please. Go bait cast. <laughs> All right. So yeah, when we get to bait caster, bait caster is my favorite setup at this point. But it was definitely not at the beginning. Um, first bait caster I had was an Abu Garcia Black. Uh, the black max and i could not figure it out for the life of me and i i owned it for about a year and i, I think i took it out one time I was like this is the worst and i put it away and i said I'm never using it again <laughs> and then uh you know after talking to paul about it for a little while i was like fine 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 do it till i figure it out <laughs> like the base the basic game we play is like if you want to learn something that frustrates you you're never going to learn it if you're just like, oh, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll pick this up on a crazy Sunday. I'm, can't I'm gonna dabble. Just, you can't dabble. Like you yeah. have to say, I'm going to learn this. I'm going to learn how to frog fish. So I'm going to take a heavy rod with a heavy drag bait casting reel and put some braid on it. And I'm going to get the frog. I'm going to go out until I figure it out. And that's not it. even that. You're, you're, I'm not bringing anything else. Nothing else. Exactly. This, this is the one rod, one reel, uh, the one piece of tackle, the one lure. And you're just like, succeed or go home yeah exactly if you lose the lure it breaks off you get mad and you snap your rod in half you're done for the day and i've literally done that with fly fishing i broke i took one rod and i broke it two miles into the hike so that was great um but yeah so so bait casters uh for me we'll explain the setup we did the nice explanation of spinning yeah so uh with bait casters basically what we're looking for is 
<laughs> they're, they're, uh, we talk about with the rods, they're the ones that are gonna sit in the reel seat on top of the rod. And generally, you're gonna have like a, a left or a right retrieve on it. So it's gonna look a little different. If I can reach one, I'll, I'll show you if Paul can cover me for two seconds. And we're back. <laughs> My dog's here. So um, I have no idea what Jeff told you. The most important thing to know about a baitcaster is that Jeff has one in his hands right now. In and we're back. <laughs> there you go. All right. So oh, this is my seven three rod. This is not going to work at all. I can't even get it in here. Bam! Baitcasting reel. There you go. So, anyways, so what vertical. You say? Nothing. Yep, so they're on top of the rod. We have a left or a right retrieve, which is up to you. It's kind of like how you cast. So if you are casting a, a spinning setup with your right hand, right, then you're going to probably right hand cast with your bait casting setup, which means you're going to be a left hand reel. You might be weird like Paul and you might switch it up. I don't... <laughs> you're getting, making the face. It just, um, okay, I, I'm going to... If anyone's listening to this that knows what the hell they're talking about, maybe I should Google it. I've never Googled it. I should Google it. What's Google that? knows everything. It, why you're weird? Why do people? Okay, I'm I'm getting too mad. Why is it <laughs> that people cast with their left hand mm -hmm. and then switch hands and then, and then switch reel? hands to reel also yeah. with their left hand when you could very easily, uh, uh, easy more easily just cast with your right real with your left that that would be like if you're rock climbing and you decide to blaze somebody and you're like you know what i'll just switch hands every time every right. time i bring in some slack i'll just switch hands and then maybe kill that person i so don't are we weird or are they weird or are I, we all normal in i know weird i'm ways? weird if you go into a store i get the discount because i get the the last left-handed one out there i'm like oh Dude, thank god i i am a left-handed realer too so you're not the only weird one it i'll be weird too <laughs> so I, but legitimately if anyone knows put it in the comments you'll be doing me a gigantic favor because i'm sure there's something very interesting that i just don't know yeah so uh at, at any rate what i highly recommend is just test cast if you know somebody who has a bait caster like test cast it out well, a, a few times are we gonna explain, did you explain how we're they gonna work? get into how to use it but you're gonna have to just figure out like what side you want to reel it on yeah. how to cast it is a whole nother animal. No, no, no. Uh, just how they in, work in general. How in, is it different than a... In simplest terms, caster. we talked about the spinning reel where you would flip the bail, you hold the line, you, you what do we call it? Cock it. <laughs> Back cast. <laughs> go with that. That never Lined came up. up. Yeah, yeah, you got <laughs> Cock it. it. <laughs> Cock it and shoot it out there. <laughs> and anyway, uh, so with a bait caster, you're going to have a, a little button you're going to press, you press the button, you keep your thumb mm -hmm. on the line so it doesn't spool off and make you really pissed off with a. It's, a it's because a bait caster, the reason you have to hold your thumb on it is a bait caster, instead of the, instead of the spool where the line is entwined, <clears throat> instead of being parallel with the reel, it's perpendicular. And what happens is when you throw, when you throw the, the lure, Mm -hmm. the lure is not just pulling the line off the spool like unspooling it like just the line only because the spool is perpendicular it's not fixed in a spinning setup that you're usually used to seeing the spool is fixed it's not actually moving at all the line's just coming off of it in a bait caster the spool actually spins and mm -hmm. the, the the lure actually has to pull the line and has to spin you know, as it's going out, it actually has to spin the, you know, the, the spool is actually spinning under your thumb. Um, and that's where and, we get into some fun situations. Yeah. And then the, the button that Jeff was talking about engages or, un, or disengages the tension on the spool. So when you click the button, it means the spool is free spooling. It can go forwards and backwards. It's got a bunch of uh, bearings that allow it to spin very quickly um, with like the least amount of force possible um and then when you when you engage when you to, when you engage by spinning the actual um when you when you actually start reeling in it engages it again and then now the drag is engaged right. um so, so you're, we, you're yeah, when we talked ahead. about like spinning you know we talked about flipping the bail 
or stopping the line. I, you know, I like to keep my hands over the spinning reel. So I'm ready to flip the bale before the lure hits the water with bait casting. You actually depress your thumb to the line to stop that line before uh, stop the lure before it hits the water, because if it hits the water at a high rate of speed and you don't have your magnets, your magnetic brake system set or your spool tension set, which you can get into this, this is where you can screw things up. Your spool that Paul's talking about is going to keep spinning, but the line is no longer moving out at the same rate of speed. Therefore, it bundles up into what we call a bird's It's so facto, it's a cluster. Yeah, and then you're basically picking at this line for about 30 to 45 minutes and not catching fish, right? Because it's spun over itself and your yeah. whole life is ruined. So when you get into bait casting reels, uh, you don't need... I'm, I'm going to say this right here. I am definitely a snob with bait casting reels, but that's because I suck at bait casting. If you don't suck at bait casting, you can take like a nice uh, Abu Garcia Black Max and it's 39. Yeah, Paul's still, I still have mine. You have yours, but uh, it's $39.99 and it's perfectly fine. The, what, what we'll get into is like basically tuning it, like setting it up mm-hmm. the right way, the appropriate way for the appropriate lure that you're using so essentially i I talked about spool tension and the magnetic braking system like every bait casting reel every modern bait casting reel that is has that so what you're going to want to do is find the adjustment that a you know works for you b is appropriate for the lures that you're using and i guess c you don't have to really give a shit if you have a super high-end one because it'll basically set itself up like if you have a, a dc a digital chip set up on your bait casting reel and you pay 500 bucks for it it's going to cast itself it's going to catch the fish by itself it's going to reel them in for you it's going to give you a kiss and you're going to feel good at the end of the night fingers so, crossed. fingers crossed <laughs> but if you don't have that opportunity to spend 500 bucks on a reel um well i mean there's affordable dc ones like the uh slx dc is 189 bucks that's quote unquote affordable. It's almost a $200 reel. If you want to spend $200 on a reel, cool. Be my guest. Uh, I'll talk about some of my favorite reels here in a second, Paul too, but you guys can get by on a cheap bait casting setup. I would recommend it because if you can figure it out on that, you can figure it out on anything. Like I'd, I'd rather get better at it. So I still have, uh, I have two shitty reels right over here that I'm going to learn uh, to get better at this year. They're a lot harder to dial in than my SLX or my uh, Revo, uh, the Abu Garcia. So, you know, well, it just takes some work. Really the, difference between, the difference between a super high-end baitcaster and a cheapo is one, power. Mm-hmm. Power. I mean, your ability to just crank. And then the other is retrieve speed and yeah. weight. Those are the three things that you're paying for roughly when you're, when you get into, we'll say 125 plus. Yeah. I mean, also at that point though, they're just so much easier to tune. Like they're, they're just easier to, uh, you know, service at the end of the season. They're easier to adjust so that you don't bird's nest as, as often. Like it's just mm-hmm. easier. Like yeah. for example, um, what I like about the Revo series, uh, I have an SX like, the uh, spool tension has a clicker on it. So I like, you know, the Black Max just has a little screw. It just keeps going, you know, and you kind of, it's hard to figure out where you're at with that tension. Mm -hmm. And by the way, when we're talking about this, what we're talking about is like, if you have a heavier lure, you're going to have a tighter spool tension. If you're going to have a lighter lure, you're going to have a lighter spool tension. So the reason is one way. The reason is like, that basically means if you have a super, the, the basically the, if you've never seen one before, the way this would work is you tie on your lure. Let's assume it's already set up. The line's already on and everything. You tie on your lure. Um, there's, a little, there's a little knob. And what you're going to do is you're going to push that button Jeff was talking about. It's going gonna, it's gonna to disengage the drag. And what that's going to do is um, it's going to allow the spool to spin freely. Now, mm-hmm. what, what you would do is you would tie your lure on. Your lure is going to have, like, if it's an eighth-ounce jig, there's there's a point in when you're adjusting down the tension where that lure just by the weight of it is going to start pulling the drag and it's going to start to drop so you just keep turning it down the tension you keep turning the tension down until the lure's weight just starts to move just and it barely. very slowly starts dropping that is the perfect wherever it is right there is where you stop turning it down that's the perfect weight because when you cast it's going to be heavy enough 
to pull the lure is going to be heavy enough to just pull um like the right move rate move, speed. it's going to move the spool but it's yeah. not going to make it so that the spool is spinning so quickly it's not so loose that it's going to spin so quickly that it the spool spins faster than the lure can go in the air and so yeah. that's what you're going to do every single time every single time you tie in a new lure you basically reel it all the way up to the tip you click the button if it doesn't move if the if it if the thing doesn't move, you turn down the tension until it just until your lure just starts to drop. If it drops immediately, you tighten it, you reel it back up, and you just keep doing that until you get to that point where right when you push the button, it barely starts to drop. Yeah. So you know what, what we're talking about, guys, is like let's so let's let's say you're throwing a bunch of spinning lures. Uh, spinning lure just being like one of those little skirted jig heads with a elbow wire that has some willow leaves, little like little blades hanging that off looks of like it. it would never catch a fish. That, but it absolutely does because it looks mm-hmm. like a bait ball, like just a little mm-hmm. ball of fish, um, little food for your, your bass or whatever you're uh, fishing for. So let's say you're throwing those. You might have a whole bunch of those in the exact same weight. So if you have a whole bunch of those and they're like three eighths of an ounce, then you can tie them on at willy nilly, not have to adjust your bait caster at all. And that's amazing. But let's say that you're like, okay, we need to get down there a little bit more. And now you jump from a three eighths ounce to a half ounce or three quarter ounce. And now you need to adjust the spool tension. Because if you jump from three eighths to three quarters, you've got a much heavier lure and it's going to cast differently. So what we're saying is like, if you're having trouble bait casting, start by adjusting the spools tension. The magnetic braking system is a whole different thing, uh, but mostly the spool tension is where people get screwed up. Braking system, like, honestly, for me, still haven't figured it out. But I, I, I do know that uh, the spool tension is what has always messed with me. It's kind of like that common issue until I think you showed me, and then I watched like 10,000 videos, and then yes. I just like committed to it, and then I figured it out. Hard so, recommend watching video. Yeah. yeah. And then that, but that you were talking about the difference between like a really expensive and like a relatively cheap one, the, your ability to get set up quickly and like do that without a lot of effort is yeah. so much easier on a super fancy. They're usually smaller profile. Mechanical. Yeah, exactly. Oh yeah. They're definitely smaller, lighter. Yeah. Yeah. The more expensive it is, the lighter it is, smaller profile, which means you can, it feels better in your hands, which to me is ideal. Like if you're fishing for eight hours, like you're going to want that. If you have like, this big bulky heavy thing and you want to cast it a thousand times today it's going to be annoying it's going to work out yeah uh and unless you're really good at dialing it in and it's a cheaper reel like you're going to be frustrated but if you have a higher end reel you don't have to worry about dialing it in as much then it's it's just a little bit easier so i'd say like sub sub 50 dollar range if you guys want to start a reel i'd recommend the black max like all day yeah um if you're looking to a higher end reel you're not going to find much that's great under a hundred dollars i would lose. say the lose yeah, but Mach three. their good ones are usually over a hundred bucks yeah i i have two that i got talk about like the speed spools the 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 like the green handles mock what did you say the mock three yes yeah or the mock crush which is probably like their 100 120 but yeah, yeah. So that, yeah, those would be okay. Those would be okay for sure. They're, I've been they're happy be with mine. Setup. That's the most um, I'm spending. Period. <laughs> period. The I'm a cheapo. The, no, I mean, like to each their own. Exactly. Like if you can find bargains on them, awesome. If you guys kind of like find, eh, you got you got a taste for more expensive stuff, like me, like that's fine too. And I'll say <laughs> more expensive stuff. Just says I, it's fine. Yeah, I say it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> tell your wife uh i probably still won't go over 150 like I, I don't think i'll ever get that slx uh digital chip that's 189 bucks i think that's that's outside of my willing range yeah but the revo sx is like 150 bucks that's that was top end but it's that that is my favorite all-time reel it's fast too though it's fast A thing for bat it's i feel like that's such a bass centric I mean, yeah, honestly, but it I think comes they, in a lot of different speeds, though. I mean, you can get it fast. True. You can get it slow. Like, yeah, I feel like is, it, uh, it's. What is this one? 661? So, oh, I mean, that's not. That's, no, that's not fast. No, that's not fast at all. Wow. My SLX is fast. The SLX is like an 8. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. So, we're talking real speed. Uh, Bay casting setups have a speed setup. So, you're you're going to see a whole bunch of different numbers. It's usually like. Six six one seven two one eight zero one or some crap like that, 
And all that means is like, just pay attention to the first number if you don't care about anything else. But if it's an eight, it's a really fast reel. So if you're running like a chatter bait or a spinner bait and you want to just burn it or a crank, you're going to do like an eight or a seven. And if or if you, you want to get a fish in quick. Yeah. And if you want to get a fish to the boat really fast, yeah, that's going to get it done. If you have a slower speed reel, I'm using air quotes, like a, a six, then it's going to be slower to the boat. But if I'm like pitching and f- flipping and pitching, like I'm going to use that typically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I mean, and- I've also heard the argument the other way with flipping and pitching though. Like if you get that hook in and you want to get, if you're tournament fishing, like you're using like fast reels all the time. That's what, that's what I'm saying. It's such a, like, I think bait casting in general Outside, <laughs> outside of bass fishing, is it really like a thing? Yeah, muskies all day. Pike. Why? I, I, I use it for every... Well, fish. not that you can't. I use mine for all the time. But I, f- yeah. I feel like if, if it weren't for bass fishing, would mm-hmm. baitcasters even matter? Because they are not helpful. Uh, elaborate. <laughs> what's the... Be- if you, okay, if you're muskie fishing, what's the benefit of having a baitcaster? I know the benefit of having one if I'm bass fishing because pretty much the, the, the main difference between a baitcast and a spin cast mm-hmm. is... A, I think a bait caster, how do I, a bait caster almost always has more powerful drag. Yeah. And it almost always has a faster retrieve ratio. So that those, those numbers, sure. Those are the things that bass people care about. Mm-hmm. I don't think it also, I, I just don't think anyone else really cares that much. Do you think about those things specifically? Bigger fish at all? It depends on how big do you, mm-hmm. have you ever in your life ever seen someone fishing for like permit or whatever in like big, huge salt water ever have a bay caster? Mm-hmm. No, no, mm-hmm. no. Yeah. I think it's pretty much. Then we, get into, then we get into trolling, which is the whole. Exactly. So, and that's where in it. Yeah. You, I feel like it's almost exclusively a bass thing. I think it's I fun. I think it's fun. Oh, I, I love doing it. I have and fun. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm 50, I'm 50, 50, but I just think if you were, if we were going to get a heady with this, mm-hmm. I would say, I think if it weren't for like the bass fishing culture, which let's be honest is like, I mean, it probably, but a percent it's the majority, it's the majority of it. Right. Well, yeah, I think a lot of it is easy to catch. They're everywhere. Uh, they're well, fun yeah, to catch. It, there's, there's no bad. It's not, I'm not like saying it's a bad yeah. thing. I catch bass like a, you know like yeah bass are stupid. that's what i like to do. Yeah, bass are dumb i hate <laughs> bass, fun. bass are dumb bass fishermen <laughs> no, are dumb but i think just in general i think bait casting most people who buy a bait caster buy it almost because they are almost exclusively bass fishermen mm. i mean I, I i can get on board with that point but at yeah. the same time i think that it's also you can use it for anything it's sexy fishing I think I think it's the sex bass, appeal. <laughs> bass fishing culture. Yeah, yeah. There's a reason you have a fancy hat and I have a cheapo sweater. <laughs> I think so. I mean, like spinning reels, light lures, easy to cast, no backlash, but you get the line twist. They are almost always a little bit cheaper. Oh yeah, for, for, sure. for the level of quality. Yeah. Um, so they are almost always going to be better. less complex too. For sure. Though I mean, have you Absolutely. ever taken apart a bait casting reel? It sucks. Why would I ever do that? Baitcasters, <laughs> bait, bait baitcasters. Um, typically, you can put a lot heavier line on there. They have mm-hmm. a better drag. Period. Um, big lures. It's that's definitely a part of it. Um, but they mm-hmm. birds nest because the spool keeps going. They're they're definitely more difficult to use. Um, we got to do a video and, on that. We will casting, and, casting a baitcaster. We'll do sure. them all. We'll just do them all in one. And then we, we'll light give you lures. Guys some good stuff. And doing light lures can be really challenging with a bait caster. I mean, if you're oh, trying yeah. to finesse with a bait caster, that, there's no yeah. point. Anything under um, three eighths ounce, it's kind of kind of shitty. <laughs> it's tough. Um, yeah. There's a couple other kinds. You got your trollers, so that they have like line counters because you want to know exactly how much line you have going out behind your boat um, or your kayak or whatever. Um, they have uh, lower, like the the, um, the totally different line capacities. Um, you know, and then really they're super, super heavy duty. Right. And then a lot of them come in like a salt water. Most of them are sealed, have sealed drags and that whole thing. You get, um, you're getting big ends with those. Yeah. You're, you're trudging I, them from the depths or you're just I mean, getting some big ends. That that's a winch. 
um spin yep. casters that's like your basic it's like a combo between the spinning rail it's your and frozen infinity. two setup it's your ninja turtle it's your rocket rod <laughs> you didn't even say spider-man that's like you don't care so, well, sorry. um you said Ninja <laughs> Turtles. It's like they will, they will, they do make, they do make fancier versions that have like a trigger, right? Yeah. Um, but that'll like tear up your line. They have really low line capacity, and they're not durable. I mean, like they will, as any if you're, parent if you're knows, an adult, yeah. they're just if you're new and you're get just getting started. Um, if you're no. if you're like if you know you're a bass person, um, bait caster. I think if you're just if you, do it, if you're like, it. I'm a bit, yeah, just get a, bl- you if you're just getting you, into it, like you're just going to get a spinning time to learn. and try to learn anyways. So this is like just, skiing versus snowboarding. Skiing is spinning period. And then everybody's like, do skis testing first. Is snowboarding. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was like, yeah. we made our, our daughter do uh, skis first, but this year she did snowboarding. Guess what? She's better at snowboarding, <laughs> like wow. natural, like a natural border. Really, just shredding Shredder. that. Hour. She was just yeah. trying to do jumps, and she's shit. like, "Don't, like, don't talk down. to me about, pe- don't talk to me about pizza and French fries. Show me where the pipe is." She's like, "Dad, I gotta send it," and she just did a freaking grind, and I was like, well, "Get out of here!" Casual, very casual, <laughs> casual grind. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I did, um, that's reels, rigging. We kind of already talked about rigging. I think we already covered that. I'm not, yeah. I'm so I mean, that. I guess l- l- let's do. We'll, we'll leave it at this. We'll we'll just leave it at this. So rods and reels. That's a heavy subject. So, you know, if you guys are looking to get into it, obviously uh, we just said it, do a bait casting setup. Like if you're fishing for bass, if you're doing something else and it makes sense, do the spinning setup. Like Paul said, mostly bait casting is like a bass fishing thing. Um, it definitely applies to many, many species. Um, and it's kind of a preference thing at that point. But if you're just bass fishing, especially from the bank, just go for the bait caster, figure it out get frustrated get mad for 12 hours and watch a ton of videos maybe ours in the future maybe i don't know check out maybe ours this weekend maybe this weekend all right uh we'll 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 get it in if not this weekend when paul and i go on a trip next week yes um so yeah i mean other than that i think we got a whole nother gear episode another time that would be like how deep yeah how deep are we right tackle storage plastic storage we gotta be an hour in Oh yeah, I don't, I, we're not gonna run this one to death, I don't think. So, we'll we'll leave it at that. Um, if it's you guys are looking two parter, yeah, I mean, if you guys want to hear more about this, or you want us to get into uh, more into tackle, tackle storage, plastics, bags, stuff like that, we can definitely get into that. That's a whole lot of fun. If you uh, want to know how to rig up what you've got because you don't know what you're doing yeah i think there's a whole rigging there's a whole rigging episode and that for that you'll have to go to the youtube partner episode so you'll have to watch the video and maybe listen to you know 100 percent. um but yeah so you guys know where to find us if you want to look us up on your social medias we are on instagram at burly fishing facebook.com backslash burly fishing go to youtube the channel is burly fishing and guess what the email is burly's fishing (laughs) currently at gmail.com there's a little s there's not a z it's not a z it's burly s fishing at gmail.com if you want to email us but you can just leave us a five star on this podcast if you guys like the content and drop a comment there as well uh we'll try to leave uh some of the stuff we talked about in the show notes i'll, I'll be sure to go back and add that later as well as maybe what do we have the uh action uh yeah. picture that you did the diagram rambo v terminator Rod yep. action, rod action visualization, and then we got some videos that we're gonna have to add on there later. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll, we'll we'll come back to it. But uh, yeah. hopefully, you guys are uh, surviving your quarantine safely, and you guys are staying healthy, and you're having a good time, and more and learning how to cut your own hair. You can learn how to catch them there, <laughs> most importantly. Uh, and that, you know, you're getting outside because the outside's not quarantined yet. Let's get out there. Yep. Get, order your bait caster right now, get a rod. Go out there, learn how to bait cast. This is the time. time to do it. That's a good time. That's a good call. This is the best time to do it. So get out there and do it. Oh, hey, we didn't do that shout out. <laughs> Frick. Law dog. Um, Law dog. Law dog. I hope you listened to the entire episode because here you are at the end. <laughs> but buddy, I'm going to respond to you on YouTube as well. Law dog reached out uh, last week after the kayak episode on YouTube to ask us about getting a kayak. And my bro. We owe you some follow up, bro. We do. You are you are six foot four, two seventy five, looking for a sit on top kayak. Uh, yeah, we have answers. You have questions. We have answers. <laughs> we do have answers. I'll I'll comment back on YouTube too. But um, just so you know, 
that Big Waters 120s I eat, but you got to check out that seat. So go to the store, sit on the seat, feel it out. If it doesn't feel good, and I don't think it will, don't buy it. You're better off getting a big boy kayak. Uh, mm-hmm. we, we were talking the Jackson Kusa. Kusa, the Kusa, used. or you know, used. So it's normally a fifteen hundred dollar kayak. I bet you can get that for under a thousand dollars used. Uh, you know, or you go for something like a good old fashioned Old Town yep. Predator used. Yep. Uh, but you're getting a better kayak if you get it used. It lasts forever unless the owner shot it and there's bullet holes in it. That would be a problem, but if it was my money, if it was my money and I was looking for a kayak that's going to support somebody who just wants that stability. Yeah. That's what I'm doing. I'm going yeah. with Kusa. hundred percent. So, uh, yeah, look it up on Facebook marketplace. See if you can find somebody near you within a hundred miles. It'd be worth the trip yeah. uh, to get, to get what you want, the longer term, better kayak. So check it out. But Hey, thanks for reaching out to us. Thanks for commenting on the podcast. It was awesome. Yeah, man. And thanks for everybody else for listening. Drop us a review. Give, it, give us a shout out. Uh, talk to us. Maybe we'll give you a shout out on the next show. Maybe at the beginning of the episode. <laughs> Preferably. <laughs> be better. Hey, man, I could, I could just edit this. Uh, I won't. It's at, <laughs> it's at the end. This is where it lives. All right. We will catch you guys next time. Get outside. Have some fun.